Welcome back fellow space engineers, I'm the Linking Tinker and this is the fourth video in the tutorial series on how to use the Easy Automation Program. Now in this tutorial we're going to be going over how to use variables as well as self-referencing code. And in order to do this we're going to be using some of these examples that I showed you in the introduction video. So let's start out with this elevator example and using this I'll show you how to use variables. So the first thing we want to do is take a look at the code. And the code is on this LCD right here. And this LCD is called the Elevator LCD. And all these buttons reference that. So let's take a look at that. So in the private text, we see we've got a couple of code blocks, one for each floor. And one, two, three, and four. And each of the buttons tell the programming block to look at these code blocks. So let's take a look at what those code blocks do. So the velocity of the elevator piston is set to a negative number when the floor one button is pressed. And when the position of the elevator piston gets to zero meters, then it writes floor one to the LCD. And elevator piston is a name that all of these pistons down here that control the elevator share. So it's elevator piston zero one, zero two, and zero three and so on. And when we're checking those, if any of one of those satisfies the, the request, then it will be considered true. So, yeah. If we go on to floor two, uh, we have a little more code here because it's possible for the piston to be above or below the floor. So if the current position of the elevator piston is below 2.4 meters, which is the floor level of floor two, then it sets the piston velocity to a positive number to bring the elevator up. And then when it gets to floor two, it will stop the pistons and write floor two. And if this isn't true, then it checks if it's above. It does pretty much the exact same thing, except checks or it sets the velocity of the elevator pistons to a negative number to bring the elevator down. All right. So how are variables useful? Well, let's say we want to change the level of floor two. In order to do that, we'd have to change this, 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 and this. And I'm lazy, so I don't want to do all that. I want to just change one number. So that's where variables come in handy. In order to set variables, we're going to create a special code block called variables. And this is a reserved name for code blocks. You can only use this name to set variables. If you try to use it like for anything else, it will cause problems. So don't do it. All right, so this first variable we'll write is for floor two. So we'll just call it floor two. And then we'll set it to 2.4 meters as we see down here. So an important thing to realize is that you can't have any spaces in the variable name or any commas in the variable name. Otherwise, it will cause some conflicts. So if you do do that accidentally, it won't work. And the detailed info of the programming block will tell you what you did wrong so you can fix it. All right, so now that we have a floor two variable, we can just replace all these 2.4 meters with that variable. So floor two, and we'll just copy this and paste it all for all those. So now when we press the button, it doesn't check each number, it checks floor two when it, for every time it hits that. So we go back in here and we want to change floor two level to say 3.4 meters. All we gotta do is change this one number. And now when we hit the button, we come up a little higher. Excellent. All right. So now we know how to use variables or set variables. We have the capacity to set dynamic variables, which can be changed. This is very useful because it allows you to write a lot less code. And 
what we have right now. We've got four code blocks, one for each floor. The fact is, is that each of these code blocks do exactly the same thing, and the only thing that changes is the level of the floor and what's written to the LCD. So we can actually just do all that with one code block. So let's just get rid of floor one and floor three and floor four. There we go. So now we just have floor two and we'll rename this to something more generic like all floor. Excellent. So in order to use uh, variables dynamically, we're going to have to create them first. We want a variable for each of the floors. So we'll create floor one, and that's at zero meters. And just copy this and paste it two more times in floor three and floor four. We're at 4.9 meters and 7.4 meters. There we go. So now we have all floor. We want to set the default variables that it automatically runs with. And we'll just have it automatically run with the floor one. So whenever we call it like we usually did, it will bring us to floor one. Oh yeah, and we also want a variable for what's written to the LCD. So we'll create those two. Write one equals, and then we'll copy this and paste it four more times for each of the floors. So two and three and four. And here we'll copy what we originally wrote here to floor two. And we'll just copy for all of them and change which floor it says we're at. So one, two, three, and four. Excellent. So now we've got variables for all of our floors and a single general code block. Oh, and we need to replace this with the right one here and also here. Okay, and now that we've got those, we have to indicate what we want to be replacing. So it's going to default to floor one and right one, but say we want to replace floor one and right one with floor two and right two. So in order to do that, we'll put a star one for the first place that we want to replace. So we want to replace floor one with floor two We'll handle that in the argument we pass with the button. And we will also want to replace right one with right two. So we'll put star two here. And this indicates that this is the first variable that's going to be replaced, and this is the second variable that will re be replaced. And if we put star three, it will be the third variable. Four, it will be the fourth variable, so on and so forth. All right. So now that we've got our generalized code block, and our variables. I'll show you how to use those when passing arguments from the button. All right. So for the first button, we're going to use the easy automation programming block like it was using before and write in the LCD name, which is elevator LCD and all floor code block. And since first floor is what's uh, defaulted to. We don't need to do anything more there. But now that we are running floor two for the second button, we will say all f the elevator LCD and inside the brackets all floor. And then inside two more brackets right after all floor, we will put what we want to replace the previous variables with. So the star one will re be replaced with floor two and the star two after a comma will be, re be replaced by right right two all right confirm so now when we press the second button you know, 
right. We didn't change that, did we? So it is actually 2.4 meters here. Cool. So now when we press floor two, it will bring us to floor two. Floor one will default to floor one. And we want to use the code block for floors three and four. We just have to replace it, the dynamic variable placements with floor three for the third button and right three. And floor four and right four. Confirm. All right, so now we have an elevator that worked exactly like it did before, but instead of having to write four code blocks, we just have our variables and a single generalized code block. Excellent. So that is how you use variables. Oh, uh, one more thing. If you want to stick with the default, uh, but you've like passed well, let me let me show you a little something here. So we'll drag this down here, paste this in. So elevators, LCD, all floor code block, replacing floor two and right two for their various star one and star twos. Let's say we want to default uh, this actually, the star two. In order to default star two, then we just don't enter in anything here and it will default to the right one. But if we have right two here and we want to default to floor one and replace the uh, star two and not the star one, then we just put a star here like that. So where, wherever you want to default, just put a star and if it's after another thing that you don't want to default, and if you want to default something that's like star one and then star two, then you don't have to write anything after that. So in this case, we will default to floor one. So we'll go to floor one, but we will write floor two. So I'll show that now. So normally this would change to floor one. What happened? Oh, oh, that's right. Floor one. I pressed, I pressed the first button. So let's go up to floor three, and now press the second button to go down to floor one. So we'll write floor two. All right. So now. If we just say we want the second button to go to floor two, but default the star two and replace the star one, then we can just put one variable in there and it defaults floor one that's written to the screen and brings us to floor two. So yeah, we've got the star one and star two being replaced. I hope you understand that. I I am not very confident in my explanation, but <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. You can write some questions in the comments if you've got them. So now let's take a look at self-referencing code. So we'll be using this piston example, the delay example, to show you how self-referencing code works. I kind of went over this in the intro video and I showed you here how we just wrote down the names of the previous code blocks and it automatically runs them. But what I didn't show you was that you can have code blocks referencing code blocks and inside those code blocks we can reference other code blocks. And that's what was happening here with Jagged times three. Uh, jagged times three is referencing Jagged and all together now is referencing jagged times three. So when you press the fourth button, this runs and references this code block, and then it 
turns the pistons on, reverses the even pistons, and then it runs this code block three times, and then delays a little bit, reverses the odd piston, and delays a little bit, and turns off the pistons. So yeah, uh, code blocks can reference other code blocks just by writing the name of the code block. It's that easy. And that is pretty much it for variables and self-referencing code. And in the next tutorial, we're going to be going over some some more statements. Uh, these are the end and the skip statements, and they make it easy to get out of code that's running currently. So I'll see you there later.